I feel like our YouTube screen had a bit of stuff on the on the camera. So Jill is off looking for uh, various things uh, for potentially plying. Um, are you are you giving up and gonna I'm check gonna later? I'm gonna give up for now. Yeah. You know when I when when you totally beat me and completely embarrass me and you've got all that extra time there, um, that's a good time somewhere. to look for your bobbin. So uh, today is day one zero, um, also known base ten as day. 12. Um, and uh, this is the final day of the base twelve spin along. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, uh, let's. This calls for a bit of celebration. This is the first spin along I've done. And um, it's our first end of year spin along. First against end of the year spin along. And so we have some bubbly. There you go. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for joining us on this uh, final day. And for those of you that have joined multiple days or watched us multiple days, we, we, we really salute you as well. We appreciate it. Um, thank you. So um, what is the final fiber for today? Final fiber is black tweed. Oh. Now, if, um, if you were paying close attention, wait, now I got to go look at my map and see when I actually spun that uh, because... Uh, I spun that uh, as the beginning of my current um, uh, 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 bobbin. So that would have been on... Or, sorry, Midnight Tweed. Midnight Tweed. Which is a mix of Marina Wool, Jacob Wool, Tessa Silk, and Sari Silk. Um, and I know a lot of people really like this blend in this back. Um, what do so... you mean? Haven't they just seen it today? <laughs> And um, I think I might try to, I am going to offer it as a standalone hand carded bat, but hand carded bats are labor intensive and therefore kind of pricey. So this one, I think I might make into a signature blend um, Ooh, or something uh, similar. I might not be able to get it exactly, but I should be able to do something close. Oh, cool. That's what all of this is about, experimenting and, and uh, playing around with different fibers. I mean, that's the entire point of doing a spin yeah. along, right? So um, the so my fiber is day number four. I'm going all the way back yeah. to day number four. So which which fiber is that? Can you get, look up on your you, key? It's a sky bat. Sky? Okay. But, uh, what are the details of this particular bat? That one, I... That has 40% merino wool. <coughs> Sorry. 20% rambouillet. Rambouillet. 5% viscose from rose. We're gonna keep 10% mulberry silk. 10% mulberry silk lap. 10% Polworth wool. And 5% tussa silk with a touch of flask. Flax. Interesting. So this is this is gonna be slightly it won't be as tweedy as yours. But no, because be... it doesn't have the sari silk in it. Okay. Um, but it will have that from the pink bat, the little naps. Yeah. It has the same kind of Interesting. Naps. Cool. Um, yeah, so I, uh, and I'm, I'm seeing the naps come out now. You know, part of me is thinking that maybe if we're going to end up streaming two ways, what we really should do is like have one camera facing downwards on our hands, on our hands and then our bobbins and stuff. And then one end, one facing our our faces, facing our faces. We've got to look at streaming software because I think there is YouTube. You can set up multiple cameras. But there's all sorts of weird things that we could probably do. We could do like picture in picture with other cameras, and yeah, no, we can get fancy with this. <laughs> um, you know me. I know. I, like I to understand overboard. why everybody likes this one. It's really nice this one. It is. It is. It is really fun because those those. Uh, Little naps and stuff that come out. You know, I really like this cloud one, and I like the the pink one that that matched it. Uh, yeah. Because those nips yeah. are, are fun. I really like the new silk nips. I've got to start dyeing it as well. Oh yeah. 
So these are not hand dyed, right? These are these are machine carded. Are these no, are, these were hand carded. These are hand carded, okay. Yeah. So could you do a signature blend with the nuts as well? Or no, there's that's not something out? I can get into the blends. Gotcha. Um, but like this blend has sorry silk in it uh, and doesn't have those nuts. And I can get sorry silk put into okay. my mill blends. So yeah. everything in here, I just might have to sub the Jacob out for a different gray wool. Lenora is lamenting that if we uh, if we do two different types of streams, then she would have to watch two ways yeah. to get the full effect. Well, and hopefully we can figure out how to get YouTube to stream uh, two different things at once, right? We can we can do like we we're saying. Uh, oh man, we can mount the cameras <laughs> to our wheels. Like how nerdy would this be, right? So, like, get some GoPros. How for many our GoPros wheels. are we going to buy after <laughs> Yeah. When they're on sale, right? Because GoPros are not cheap. No. Well, maybe, like, they're on what, Generation 6 now or something? Yeah. So maybe the previous generations would be fine. There are plenty of small video cameras. We don't need 4K resolution for no. our, uh, our spindles. Or do we? <laughs> or do we? Yeah. I don't um, think I need to be that high res. So, uh, we need to figure out if we're going to actually end up flying tonight, because we also have presents to wear. So many presents. So many presents. The kids were good this year. And I got to wrap your presents, but that'll happen tomorrow. I wrapped most of them today, and then I remembered I had a whole oh stash I forgot about. Now you make me feel bad. Why? I finished yours in like a night. <laughs> I would have finished yours when you were out shopping if I hadn't forgotten about it. Um, uh, we watched Nightmare Before Christmas tonight with the kids. And my little pony. And yes, my little pony. We have to watch, we need to watch the How to Train Your Dragon Christmas. Oh, that'd be good too. Yeah. Incidentally, both of those, um, well, Nightmare Before Christmas isn't second. That's completely Christmas. But yeah. the, uh, what's interesting is the uh, My Little Pony holiday special it's is uh, intended to be secular. Um, although they do have, I don't know if you noticed, but they have a couple of different references to other movies, right? So there's an, actually an elf reference. Yeah. Um, and there was, oh, what else? There's one other thing. Uh, they had a Charlie Brown reference. That's what it was. Um, so. Uh, what else? You said you 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 went out for a couple of last minute things, and you yeah. said that everything was crazy. Yeah. So tell me, why why is it crazy? What was Just crazy? Traffic. Traffic. A lot of people driving around. Yeah. A lot of people in the stores too, or. Uh, for like late afternoon on a Tuesday, on uh, a Monday, yes. <laughs> it's true. Normally, it some, be dead the shopping center I went to sometimes we go there on Monday early evenings to catch movies because the movie theater there has their cheap prices are on Mondays and they have free popcorn on Mondays. Yeah. So that is how we usually see movies. Um, and it is usually dead and it was like, it is on like the weekend at yeah. five. Wow. Yeah. You know, kind of part of me wants to just go to the mall right now and people watch. Right, like, but I wouldn't get parking. Yeah. <laughs> to actually, people watch, right? Yeah. So I'm happy to stay away from the stores until our annual Target run on <laughs> Boxing Day for cheap Christmas. Which is the day after Christmas, right? Yes. So we're still pretty full up on wrapping paper. I guess we still have a lot of gifts left to wrap. So <laughs> we'll see if that changes. It's a lot of little things. Yeah. We still have a lot of box. We need gift bags. We need gift bags. Mm, yeah. Now you know what the Duarte's are shopping for after Christmas. <laughs> the, um, I, I don't know. I've gotten pretty good at just wrapping things really weirdly. You enjoy that. I do not. <laughs> it does get to the point of, uh, screw it, just throw in the bag. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as we learned from My Little Pony, the best gift is friendship. Yes. That you can't put in a bag. Or at least not legally. Or you can. You send hand <laughs> That's from Lenora, right? Yes. Thank you, Lenora. Lenora. You put the biggest smile on Jill's face. Um, 
she uh, she she was going out to go shopping today. Went out and grabbed the mail beforehand, and immediately came in because she had to open it and figure, see what it was. Put on the socks right away. Hasn't taken them off since. No. Um, I don't know how it is, but other people always make socks that fit me better than the socks I make myself. <laughs> That's why I have to deal with you that you make my socks. Yep. I need to make you a pair of socks. I'm going to do a pair of socks. Well, so I, I need finished to work my on stocking. a pair of socks for you. So. Um, I don't know if anybody here has been looking at my Instagram feed, but I finished the stocking for Chris. And oddly enough, if you're looking at Jill's Instagram feed, you'll find that, yep, you know what? Um, the stocking I made for Chris fits Jill as an actual sock. Yep. Um, which a lovely warm house slipper. Chris was not very you happy did about that. Beautiful job with this float. Thank you. My toes didn't catch on anything. <laughs> Chris is not too happy about that, though. No. But then you went and you blocked it, and... He's happy about that. Yeah. You won't make a second stocking for me to steal and steal with. You know, if you would like me to make you stocking socks, we can have that conversation. For next year. No, no, no. You need some, like, non-knitting deadlines at Christmas time for a year or so. Well, I made cookies today. You did. So what are, what are oh, the shoot. cookies? We have to make sugar cookie dough today. We can make it tomorrow morning. It only needs to be in the in the fridge for two hours. Okay. I, think. I made these. The recipe card says fried cookies. Um, I finally got the recipe from my mom. They are cookies that my grandmother would make at Christmas time. Um, and I have no idea where they come from. I'd love to know. Um, but they are these, they're date and like puffed rice with like sugar and egg. Um, and then you like roll them into bowls and coat them in traditionally coconut, but I don't eat coconut. So I do mine in powdered sugar. So, um, cookie is a rather yeah, liberal term a, for these sugar small balls. Small bite-sized dessert. Small bite-sized balls of sugar. Yeah, because um, there's no flour in those. They're sticky. They're incredibly sweet. They're oh so delicious. And none of the kids like them. I don't, they wouldn't even try them, right? Like Chris took Tini's bite. Adrian wouldn't try them. And I think Gab tried them didn't like them because she says she, she doesn't like dates so i don't remember when she possibly could have had dates um yeah i don't know so and i did end up looking online and finding some other recipes for basically this cookie but nothing that says where it comes from no are they similar to skillet cookies I, I, I just know i've heard the term skillet cookies but i don't know what they're they might be Because you you called yours fried cookies, right? So. Yeah. They are also known as fry pan cookies. Not that's, pan fried? No. <laughs> fry pan, that, that's, that's a little bit opposite from what the way people usually phrase that. Yeah, and these were through the, the, the Zecca family line, which are the, the Volga German lines. So I'm wondering if it's... A Volga German thing, or if it's just something that got picked up along the, along the way. Somewhere along the way. Yeah. Because definitely some of my, like, traditional family foods are just things that got picked up and, like, adopted by everybody <laughs> that I'm related to. <laughs> Even though they're more modern. Like the whole, like, carrot jello. Yeah, what the heck is that? <laughs> Well, no, it's it's not the fact that carrot and some jello, but there's also pineapple too, right? Yes. Like, this crushed is not pineapple, the marshmallow. yeah, like crushed pineapple, grated carrot, and orange jello. Yeah, which is actually pretty good. It's delicious. The the one thing I don't get that is a my American favorite way tradition. of eating carrots. <laughs> the um, the American tradition of doing the whole like. Uh, candy beans with uh, marshmallows, marshmallows and like maple syrup and, and or maple brown syrup sugar. on top. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's yeah, way too sweet. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. 
Although I learned uh, by following a recipe, again, this is how I fall into to learning new things to cook. I just see a recipe and I'm like, huh, that's not like anything that I've tried before. I should do that. And this one was simple. It was just butternut squash roasted in the oven, right? I've always used butternut squash for making dumplings or, or things like that, but never just roast the butternut squash. And oh my God, it turns so incredibly sweet. It's like a yam. Um, and uh, it was fantastic. And I don't know why I've never done this before. I don't Good know why other people like told me more. about it. This is like that whole thing of like everybody hated Brussels sprouts. I remember when I was a kid oh, yeah, that's watching something joke. on Nickelodeon and like and the, beets. And they were talking about how Brussels sprouts were disgusting. And then so I was like, yeah, I'll never try Brussels sprouts because Nickelodeon told me that they were disgusting. And then I tried some, uh, especially cooked with bacon. Okay. And they were amazing. So apparently Brussels sprouts now tasting delicious is an actual change. Is it really? Yes. So they've actually specifically bred them to be less bitter. Okay. And improved uh, transport from farms to grocery stores. Okay. Means they're more fresh. But and so they don't get as bitter as they used to back when our parents were growing up back still, in the 80s. They're still very bitter until you cook them right. Right? Like... Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, they used to be even more bitter. I can't, okay. Well, then you just cook them more, right? Yeah, so um, Meredith is suggesting one? putting a little brown sugar on the butternut squash. You I know, for me, for me, it didn't even need it, right? Like, we do that with acorn squash. Acorn squash, we put some brown sugar and some butter, and it is, it tastes decadent, but. Yeah, no. All of these squashes, the like... Brussels sprouts are actually different. Fantastic. Beets are not different. But yeah. I love beets now. Yeah, beets, I have a bit of a mouth thing with. I may be allergic to beets. <laughs> Entirely possible. I've got a thing. I'm allergic to celery, so... Let's see, because our parents used... Lenore is saying because our uh, parents used to boil the sprouts until they were dead. Yeah, that yeah, is... Yeah, that would be an awful way to prepare Brussels sprouts. We always roast them or saute them. Peas is another thing exactly like that, right? You used to uh, boil them until they turned brown, right? Yeah, That's which how you is knew awful. They were done. Um, I will That's often, an awful thing to do to fresh peas. I will take frozen peas... And we almost always eat ...and just run peas. them under hot water. Uh, maybe not even hot water, sometimes cold water, and make like a pea salad, and oh, it's so good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, the education about the cooking that makes a big difference. Yeah. So, but apparently that, I guess that skips a generation or something because everybody's complaining about how Gen Z's are, uh, unable to cook now, which I don't know how you can complain about them being unable to cook since they are not on their own yet. I thought Gen Z's are. Millennials are now all in like their late 20s. Yeah, or so, late thirties, like us. Yeah, so okay, Gen Z is just starting to be on there. Yes, but like, how well did you cook when you were in your early twenties? I could get around the kitchen. Yeah, you could get around, but we 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 weren't as nearly knowledgeable as we are today. No, yeah, but that's so. So Gen Z Dave is saying uh, cooking methods are important. Many things I didn't like as a kid, I like now boiled. Uh, or were boiled when I was a kid. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, also, I feel like we almost... Change, but... The only thing we ever boil is potatoes. Yep. And quite frankly, boiling potatoes is not nearly as good as just... Um, as roasting them. Well, roasting them, but then also there's, there's something that I still haven't gotten exactly the right key to it, but just pan frying them so that they get this nice, crisp skin. Oh, yeah. Um, but they also get... Cooked enough through. Uh, yeah, it's great. Yes, uh, Dave has, has correctly identified us. So we are we are millennials. Um, we are elder millennials. We are elder millennials. Um, I I hold that that uh, we, we remember life before the internet. Yep. Things like record players and most millennials do not. phones and. Having to speak to your uh, girlfriend's father when they pick up the phone first before you ask to speak to the girlfriend. Yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. Dial-up modems. Yeah. Netscape. MySpace. 
AOL. Live ICQ. journal. ICQ. Live journal too, yeah. IRC. Yep. Just general chat rooms. Mm -hmm. Muds, mucks, and mushes. Um, most millennials will not be able to identify those items. Yeah. Stranger Things is nostalgia for us, not uh, yeah. <laughs> not like watching Happy Days for yeah when we were growing up. Well, that was, that was something terrible too. I remember reading not too long ago, or you were telling me that like the distance between when we were growing up and Happy Days. No, it was that '70s show. Oh, that, okay, yeah, go ahead. So when that '70s show, the distance between um, when that '70s shows came out and the era that they were depicting is now the difference between nowadays and a show that would depict 1997. So our high school years. Yeah. Which those sorts of shows are coming out now. Yeah. Long with the 90s. Long with the 90s? Okay. Um, it's a thing. And then we got to remember our audience has a, a wide variety of ages. Yeah. So let's see. Oh, apparently, Dave has um, uh, has signed on to Mud in the past year. I'm I'm intrigued to oh, know wow. what what Mud he signed up uh, signed on to. So for those of you that that don't know what Muds are, those are called multi-user dungeons. Uh, there's also multi-user shared hallucinations and uh, mucks, which uh, just make fun of Mud and and mushes. Um, but those are basically text versions of a video game. Uh, the very, very first massive multiplayer online type games where the intent was basically you have a couple of different chat rooms and you have some commands that you could perform um, and you could go from one chat room to the next by uh, typing a move command. Um, and then it was it was it was basically kind of like a choose your own adventure where other people were were chatting at the same time, right? And now I can talk to my car. And now you can talk to your car. How are those two things related? <laughs> the things have changed a lot, right? Yeah, life. where it don't have doesn't have to be in text. Um, I'm, I'm I'd be impressed, or I'd be uh, intrigued to know what uh, what muds are, are still active. Um, because that shows a, a strong fan base still. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, this take took us essentially just about twelve hours to do all the spinning. Yeah, that we're talking about that's here, right? Hours, yeah. um, how long would it take? Does it take to ply that much? Typically for you, we'll add like times one point five for me. This <laughs> thickness. And if, for me, I'm going to do a chain ply. It'll probably take me, I would guess, hour, hour and a half. Oh, my. So, yeah, that we're not getting through tonight. We can certainly start if you want. Or should There's we save some, it for another day? I know of at least two finished, like, plied. Spin alongs. Or that other people from, yeah. from the, uh, the base 12? Yeah. I think there might be three. So. Shocking. I know. Absolutely shocking. Can you say who they are? Um, there's Janet and Canada. Sam, my uh, skin. Oh, yeah, she, she, she gets an excuse considering the fact that she was going into surgery. Yes. And now cannot use her feet. Yeah. Um, and then. You gotta spin it all I in a spindle. Okay. One of the Nashville. I think Vicky. Yeah. I think it was Vicky or, or Kelly. I think those are the ones I've seen so far. Oh, and I think and, someone else uh, asking uh, yeah. has mentioned there that she's yeah, finished. Yeah, I was just remembering her. Angela. 
Um, and did you like it? <laughs> That's the question for those that have spun it up. That's a leading, uh, yeah. That's a, a leading question, question, right? Like, um, everyone tells me they like. It. <laughs> well, that's good. At least nobody's telling you they don't like it. Yeah. So maybe we'll do this again. Well, I mean, you are still. Do you still have these available for sale? No. Okay. Because I'm I, I knew you did talk concept. about. I know you did talk about the concept of having a, um, you know, twelve day box. Yeah, but I have themes for those. Um, and Sam and I are going to work on. No, but the countdown, countdown gift, right? Yes. Because, like, you know, counting down to Christmas or New Year's or whatever is great, but like, what if you want somebody to count down to their birthday or count down to graduation or count up from graduation? Count, right. Well, count down to a wedding. I'm going to develop some other countdowns, right. and they will probably be similar formatted um, of 12 days, of half ounce a day. Uh, but then Sam and I are coming up with plans of. Um, doing something like this for yarn um which would be a little bit less intensive because doing like mini skeins and especially small mini skeins is very labor intensive um Making them, yeah. and doing the whole dyeing and and you have to make sure you have so many orders and this and that so we're trying to figure out a way of doing it smartly um so that it benefits everybody involved. Um, and then designing a pattern that can be used either for one of the fiber spin alongs or for a yarn, um, yarn minis. So Ashley says that she enjoyed uh, working with things she normally doesn't gravitate towards. Uh, I may look to getting some Tweety blends later. You know, actually I think, um, I think that that was a, a a big difference for me. Like I never thought I would enjoy spinning these these um, textured bats. Yeah, um, I, I have no idea how it's going to look in the final yarn, so that that worries me. Like I don't know if I'm going to have something to do with it, but I really did enjoy spinning it. I really like finely textured bats. Um, there's not a lot of them necessarily out there on the market. Um, there are some people who do a very good job of it. Um, but I think a lot of people see, like, think texture and think kind of the generic um, art bat, which big and chunky and nasty. big and chunky, and the fibers aren't well integrated together. And I now, when those happen upon me, I don't usually buy them, um, but they come into my, they <laughs> come they into come my into realm. Life. They come into my life every now and then. Yeah. I've taken to taking them apart and recarding them <laughs> to make them something I will want to spend. Interesting. Um, so how do you go about doing that to for as advice for anybody else who would like to try doing that? Um, so usually, usually a lot of them are too busy um, and have a lot of complementary colors in them mm -hmm. which are great pops but if you're going to recard it you're going to end up doing more optical blending and they will turn they'll mud they'll turn to mud read my article and fly <laughs> um, and so i usually what i do is i pick out like one base color um that i really want to have be the predominant color. Okay. Um, and so I shift the balance of colors and I add more fiber to it. Oh. So you're not just reworking what other people provide you. No, because right? usually you I have to. I want to correct. Change. Sorry, Ash, uh, Angela, I called you Ashley before. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> um, usually the balance of color is often a lot of art bats um, to prevent mud. Um, because you can do small amounts of complementary colors and not produce mud. Um, and so I, I actually showed this on Instagram earlier this year. Um, 
Sam had gotten some art bats when she got a wheel. She does not spin art bats. So she gave them to me. And so I then took one that was like a bright, bright hunter orange with mm. pops of purple and magenta. Um, and I think even some like chartreuse and stuff. And what I did was I took the bat apart and added more shaded oranges to it. Okay. So I added some naturally like oatmeal BFL and I added some rust and I added like pumpkin. So it was close, but more shaded. So shaded means it has black added to it. So the best bats for something like that would be ones that are easy to take apart, that they're not totally blended yet. Right. So, but even then, um, so then I, I just, I did that and I ran it through the carter. I think I ended up right through the carter, I think twice or even just once I use very, my, I have a Clemens and Clemens, uh, motorized carter and you have to do very thin layers on it for it to work properly. Um, so thin layers cause more blending. And then I spun it up and it was beautiful and it wasn't a problem to spin at all. Um, and so I have a couple more bats like that that Sam had given me that they will meet their fate soon. Yeah. Like the colors are great, but to make something that is going to be more enjoyable to spin for me, it needs to get reworked. And part of that reworking is changing the proportions of color. In the back. Gotcha. So Lenora has said she's not a huge fan of spinning textured fiber, but really like the resulting yarn. So if I end up not liking the yarns that I get from these textured fibers, Lenora, I think we've got a deal <laughs> coming up. Although you got to recognize that my uh, my time for spinning is likely uh, measured in, in eons rather than days. <laughs> Um, and 12 foot Dave has mentioned that we are mirrored on Instagram today. Although I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? Shel? I don't know. Hopefully it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I get this thing where my, um, uh, my thumb pad sometimes yeah. gets a little bit, uh, the word I want to look cramped. You try. You need to try to make sure you have a neutral wrist. Well, that's what I'm trying to now. You mentioned that a, a couple of times ago. I try. I really do. If you ever have problems with your hands with knitting or spinning or any fiber work, if you can borrow or if you have access to purchase Carson Demmer's book on, I think knitting comfortably. He has great, you know, explanation of how you should ha handle yourself and your hand, like hand movements. Handle your hands. Handle your hands. Hand movements, shoulder, knees, all that. Go to agronomics. Yeah. Lenora says, can you say carpal tunnel? Um, yeah. Yeah. No, the, uh, so does that, does that only deal with knitting though? Or does he also have comments on spinning as well? I don't. Okay, I don't necessarily know that in that book he talks about spinning, but he has had several articles in Issue Supply about spinning ergonomics. But a lot of the same ergonomics applies. It's about, you know, the lines in your arms so that you aren't bending stuff and shortening gotcha. the space. And a lot of it carries over. I had a time when I, like you, overdid my thumb. And it was hurting a lot. And so I got a copy of his book and read through it and was able to be like, oh, this is how I should adjust how I knit. So basic ergonomics. Yeah. So but that I don't do this to myself. Very nice. So and I've been able to adapt it to my spinning. Dave has clarified the mirror on Instagram thing. Apparently, we are on opposite sides on Instagram. Weird. Yeah. We've done nothing different. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, I wonder if it's related between uh, Apple versus Android. Yeah, but we've used my phone. Yeah. Um, before. Any more Prosecco? Any more Prosecco? Okay. 
Are you going to pour yourself? I, I can just keep the bottle. No. Okay, you can you can pour for me when it's done. Yeah. Give you a chance to, to catch up. To catch up. Yeah, I've got some little bit extra on the side here that you're not seeing, I'm sure. You don't have to hurry up right now. I also know the sky bats that I made for us are a little bit heavier than a little bit heavier? Yeah. Most of the other bats were like 2.2 ounces divided into four. This was like a 2.4 ounce bag divided into uh, four. Yeah. Huh. Let's see. <laughs> Lenora says, Bizarre hip strings. Yeah. So if you go onto our Instagram, apparently you see hip strings from the other dimension. Opposite mm -hmm. world. That's the one where I'm right and Jill is wrong. No, Jill's left. Uh, see, I was. Anyway. I think people got it. Yeah. Um, so I'm wearing a hand knit sweater today. You are? Yeah. I am not wearing a hand knit sweater today, but. I think we've seen this before on, on this 12 days. I just, I figured for the last day, this would be the right, the right thing to yeah. wear festive wise. Um, but yes, yeah, so tell us about your hand knit sweater. So I'm knit, I am wearing a Carbath by Kate Davies in Gooey Decay Held Double. And I think this is missed. I am wearing a Space Invaders from Think Geek. Um, and, uh, and you fixed a drop stitch. And I fixed a drop stitch on the back, which I haven't actually done properly. There's still a uh, uh, you saw uh, the... uh, bullpen in the back yeah. <laughs> holding the stitch up. I got to sew that in or something. Mm. So I'm debating whether or not to tell you something, Joe. What? Not sure if I should. Oh, oh, you <laughs> tricky, tricky. Yeah, I know. I uh, that whole thing about me having some more on the side that you weren't seeing that was not necessarily completely the full truth. Ah, uh, sneaky, sneaky neck. Um, and I think uh, me tricking you into uh, extensive exposition. <laughs> uh, to the point where you stop spinning is completely fair game. Meaning Slytherin. that for the final day I won. You learned from the master. <laughs> oh. And even with the heavier bet. Yeah. You went on about it being heavier and I was like, you're, you're just digging your, your hole deeper there, aren't you? Yeah, so apparently, uh, according to Meredith, we're a fan of Slytherins. Secret Slytherins. Which is the most Slytherin thing of all, right? To, yeah. to hide your Slytherin nature. Uh, all right. So. My, um, you can treadle off, too. I can treadle off, too. No, wrong way. Oh, good. No. Oh, or, yeah. Ah. Okay, so you have told me that I have another giant bobbin here. Yeah. Okay. This is going to go on here. You'll have to loosen up your brake band. Boop, 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 boop. It has sound effects. Yeah. Yours does not have sound effects. Mine does not have sound effects. <laughs> I really wish I knew where that my freaking bobbins and my jumbo boiling water are. Yeah. You'll find it. Yeah. Right when you're ready. So uh, I will be using. Oh, okay, there we go. I prefer to buy on my RS, so. So maybe you won't put wrong. Uh, so I might just not fly on camera. I'll fly tomorrow as my. Here's the my uh, jumbo Willy Winder, incidentally. It's pretty jumbo. I love the Willy Winder design. Like, I. I I don't know if you've ever looked at a Willy Winder, but when you look inside the groove, I don't know if you can see that it's on the camera. It's a very special type of screw. It's a very special type of screw that, as you turn it, 
you can see it on the YouTube camera at least. Um, it causes the uh, the head to go one way, and then when it hits the end, it actually causes the head to go the other way, and I keep spinning the same direction. I think it's just really, really cool. Um, I, I, have, I have often said, I'm gonna like, it's fine. It's okay. It's not broken, I swear. I hope not. Uh, no. So I'm an electrical engineer. Um, I think uh, uh, not that I'm not electrical in a stuff rush. is easy. Um, but uh, mechanical stuff is like magic to me. Um, that is a really cool. What? Spun the up. screw? No, oh, no, spun no. Up. Oh, spun yeah. Up. Yeah. All right. And then speaking of other mechanical marvels, um, I'm going to be using the Acrocate yep. for uh, for doing this. I haven't actually used this before for doing my pine. So do I have to put one of these tensiony things on top? You can if you want to. Do you usually? I live. I'm looking for advice. You live dangerously. I live dangerously. Right. Oh. There are times when I'll use it, like if I'm pine cotton or if I'm chain plant or chain plant. So I will. I like showing off one of these things, which if I remember correctly, Aiden said this is sort of an accidental part of the design. Yeah, but he really enjoys it too. But uh, if you are just going to go pull this up, watch right here. The, um, the lock just pops up on its own, right? And so that prevents it from going side to side. And then you press this here so you can put the piece down. So this is really nice in the fact that it makes a very nice, compact um, lazy cape. Um, and but you can still get up to four um, four bobbins on here, and it's a it's a nice hefty weight, so it's not going to go scooting around. But not as heavy um, as some. Not as heavy as some, and it also has these tiny little rubber feet which you can barely see on the side that actually prevent it from sliding around as well. Yeah, sometimes it has a little bit more movement than I'd want, but generally. There's one. The other one is over here. There we go. You know, I saw this. Uh, hanging around on the back yeah. there the other day, and I was like, "Wow, Jill spins really nice yarn." And then I realized, no, no, Nick that's spins mine. really nice yarn. I don't know what happened in the second half of this then, because like this looks like crap to me. No. You've been racing me. I have been racing you. So racy. Does this need to be eighteen plus now? All right. It's already labeled as not for children. Yeah. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff now on YouTube. Well, we're certainly not for children. I mean, that's that yes. is a. I mean, unless your children are spinners, I would quite sure. The more the merrier. Okay. Uh, now I've got to remember to spin backwards. Yes. Right? So that's the the first thing because I've got to. No, not that way. That way, yeah. I'm going to adjust my tension. Actually, tension is probably good. All right. Fascinated. Fascinated by what? Watching you spin. Yeah? Yeah. Am I doing this right? Nope. No. Of course not. What did I do wrong? You need to fold it over. Right, that's right. That was the problem I had before, too. It'll slip out of the way. Okay, like this? Yeah, just like an inch or two is all you need. Okay. With your single break. Kind of. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. We're we're not being entertaining at all. Um, because Nick's because concentrating. I'm concentrating. Um so Jill, you're gonna have to take a look at what people are saying. Maris is just talking about how we have one hopper puff. All right, how's this looking? Good. I think I need to. Are you on your fastest pulling? 
No, I mean, no. Put yourself on your fastest pulley. Yeah. Make that wheel go as fast as you can. This is. Am I over twisting or under twisting? Because I'm getting some big tailing here. Remember that there's dormant twist in uh, your singles. Okay, so I know so, nothing about that. Why don't you? Um, oh, and Lenora is asking, "What is that awful noise coming from the wheel?" Uh, I probably uh, you need some, some oil. oil. Yeah. Oil your bobbin, your flyer shaft. Right here. Yeah. That is definitely Somewhere bobbin noise. Back here. Mm -hmm. Let's try that. Ah, 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 ah. Wrong way, wrong way. Uh, it might actually be the brake band. I don't know. Okay. It I'm might gonna... be the brake band. I hope it's not too distracting <laughs> for people. You just have to go and sit in the other room. <laughs> I get to. That's my punishment. Can you help identify the source of the noise? I think it's actually the brake because that's you're using an Aura bobbin okay. right now, um, and therefore it an Aura doesn't have a brake band, so the groove that's on okay. that bobbin has never been had a brake like band go through it. Oh, so okay. there might be some roughness or something. Um, and that brake band should probably get the police. Um, anyway, so we might have to do some real TLC in the next week. All right. Is this, uh, so you guys will have to tell me, uh, is this annoying enough that uh, I should stop playing while, uh, while we wait for Jill to finish her stuff? Or Yeah. I can finish my Prosecco. I mean, it's not too, too bad for, for me, but I don't know how it sounds on the, on the audio. <laughs> so if, uh, if anybody has an issue with the sound, uh, I can certainly stop, um, and focus. But on I am most certain it's the, uh, the bobbin. You might want to stop and fully like lubricate the flyer shaft. That should help a little bit. It shouldn't be that noisy. Oh no, there is a there's definitely a thing going it's, on. It, yeah, in you've one got direction. A yeah, we got a burr. A burr. All right. All right. How do I? How do you deburr? Well, I know how to deburr. <laughs> how do I deal with my other stuff? Okay, I'm gonna. You're going to sit get back. Get tools. Here. What? No, I was going to get tools. Yeah. You know me. Uh, it's not nearly as bad once you get going, but when you stop and start. Uh, interesting. I bet you that has more to do with the uh, noise cancellation algorithm of <laughs> yeah. YouTube. Um, probably canceling like wind tech noise or something. Right. Oh. So. You should be able to grab one of my ravers. Just looking at should this. be the right diameter to kind uh, of sand it. Running a little bit of sandpaper and oh yeah, no, there's there's stuff just. Okay, I'm gonna step away Sometimes for a second. Magic craft bobbins need a little TLC. And now you know. Some 400 grit sandpaper will do the trick. Yeah, it will. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, higher grit sandpaper means more uh, particles. particles per inch. So it ends up being actually smoother with higher grit. That's why you'd want to have like a 400 grit for doing something to make it smooth as opposed to your typical like 200 grit, 220 rather. All right, let's see. I think I went all the way around. 
That brake band actually looks like it was about to uh, break. Yeah. No pun intended. All right. Let's see. No. It's a little bit quieter. It's not rubbing up against the flare. You got plenty of play in the bottom. The thing is, I, I can tell when I'm getting the, uh, the spot, the sound. Um, yes, let's watch me diagnose this thing. I hope that's entertaining to you all. I think it is. Um, I'd so be entertained. I, I can definitely I'm tell. The way I can tell that it's from the uh, the brake band is as I rotate the bobbin uh, with the brake band on, it's making the noise. But if I brake band off, I'm actually pushing it up against the flyer. Um, it's not making any noise at all. So it's clear to me that it's something having to do with the brake band. Um, I worry about making this too smooth because that I wouldn't. the whole point of having this there area should be some is friction, it, right? Yeah, but that's a, since that's a jumbo bobbin, there's such a large surface area for the brake band that you're going to have some friction, even if you smooth it down. Okay. Now, I'm completely screwing up my yarn. We <laughs> figured this out before I put yarn on here, but whatever. Whatevs. Right? Oop. No. Uh, come on. Oh, yeah. Uh, have too much friction. Okay, come on. No, no, go the other way. That's a lot better. It's not perfect yet, but it is better. I'm on a roll now, so hopefully that. Am I wobbling now? <laughs> Um, are the hooks balanced? There's two circular rings on the arms. Nope, there should there be. Ah, so that will cause some wobble. Um, it's okay. I don't know that I have a second large. That's okay. I'm okay with Another that. pro tip. Um, if you do have a flyer that has sliding rings on it, and if you are going to go fast with that flyer, it is best to have two, one on each arm, and to keep them at the same spot along the arm. Um, when I first had a handsome mini spinner, I actually got it to walk, almost walk off a table by spinning it at a fast speed and not having the, um, the sliding rings on the two arms balanced. But once I balanced the arm, the the sliding rings on both arms, then it did not vibrate. And I have found that that is very important. And so the whole flyer balance really does make a difference when you're going fast. And I think it's the problem that um, with my R, I have trouble with um, going fast with the, the standard R flyer. Because I don't think the flyers is, is Super balanced as it needs to be for high speeds. And that is why one wheel is not, uh, one wheel with one particular flyer and one particular bobbin is, is not going to meet all needs. You can always specialize your equipment to have better performance for doing different tasks. So help me understand uh, how do I pick what is a good angle of twist? Um, well, ideally, straight. what you would have done is when you were spinning your singles, you would do a plyback. You would pull a single off your bobbin and let it naturally fly back on itself. Yeah. And you would measure that angle of twist with the handy-dandy tool they got with their spin-along. Oh, I didn't get one of those tools. Man. There's ones of them around here. So, Well, um, this is the special one, right? Yes, this it's is a special a one. Special one just so for So you guys got the prototype. Um, for change in how in our angle of twist gauge, um, 
So we're still going to be carrying the old Anglo twist, Dave. Yes, but this is a slightly. This is a one that is more in line with the angles I typically spin it. Spin at and are trying to aim for, and so there's some five degree differences. So it's a smaller range of angles, but and but it does five degree resolution. higher resolution. Everything is getting more technical. We've got base 12, we've yeah. got angle of twist, we've been talking about. So ideally, yeah, you would do a ply back sample, gauge. what ply structure you want to do. Okay. You would record the angle of twist, and then when you're plying, you would make sure that pulling off ply jarn from your bobbin, you are matching that same angle of twist. Interesting. So I guess theoretically I could measure that now. Uh yeah, if you want to do like your most freshly spun I could, singles. I could play back on this, right? Yeah. And I could see hey, I'm doing a pretty good job. Actually. Yeah. Hey, I don't know. Can you guys see this, right? So here's my playback uh on this side. And then on this side, this is what I've been what I've been spinning at. Right. So um maybe I could stand for a little bit more twist in the um in the final, yeah, I would put a little bit result, of twist in, but I always have trouble with two ply with putting enough ply twist in. That was a Which great, is why I like great bit of three advice, ply though. because um, three ply doesn't require as much twist in ply. Okay, why is that? Hey, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Oh. So we're just we're just hanging out now. Yeah, I'm being informative. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, that's a that's a picture. That would so maybe since that's a freshly spun single, that bobbin, you put a tension tamer on top. Well, that was because I pulled out that that bit. Um, I, um, you you entertain while I. Uh, so Lenora okay. is also adding that if you look at the direction, the individual fibers, they will line up parallel with each other in a balanced yarn. Yes. I guess. Maybe. <laughs> Laura, no, better Laura vision does I, speak true. I mean, yes, technically I'm sure it's true. I'm, I'm trying to see whether or not I'm doing that. I really like this. So my first set, I don't know if you guys noticed when I showed, um, is this like sky blue with purple. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder if they'll transition at the same time. Well, ideally, if I am worth my salt in, as a spinner, they will. I do not estimate that I'm worth my salt as a spinner. You're not going to turn out to be a spinster? Well, I am already married. If that ship has sailed. <laughs> well, I guess if you die, I, I have another opportunity, but. Let's not think about that. So, um, is there any parting words that you have for everybody? I'm just super excited that everybody wanted to do this with me. Uh, I think it's it is something truly amazing. Um, I'm glad to have been a part of this. I know that it wasn't necessarily even certain that you were going to have an extra set from me. So I want to say thank you for uh, including me in this this crazy thing. I know you've done some spin alongs in the past. Um, where... I'm super proud of you. Yeah. It is hard to get you to spin on a consistent. <sighs> basis. I messed up. What'd you do? I didn't wear the T-Rex outfit. No. I'll be right back. Oh, we seem to have gotten dropped on Instagram because we hit the one hour mark. The one hour mark? Yeah.
Well, the Instagram people can suck it. They will learn. I don't know. You can also restart Instagram. <laughs> so, well, I'll just finish up talking to the YouTube people. So, yes, thank you. It was a lot of fun. It is something that we will definitely do again. Um, it's a fun way to finish out the year. Um, and we're going to find some some ways to add to it uh, for next year. So, and, and, and I need to keep stalling if you can't see what's going on in the corner. Um, no, generally, thank you guys for everything. Without you, I wouldn't get to have a job that I absolutely adore. Um, and it just keeps getting better by the year. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what 2020 has in store for me and for hip strings. Come on, man. Keep stalling. I... I know, um, having, Lenore is talking about having local spinners. One of the best things that ever happened to me was early on in my spinning, a spinning group kind of formed out of one of the local yarn shops. Um, basically, they had a spinner's night and I kept on going consistently enough um, that it got other people to go consistently. And it was a great learning experience because there's so much you can learn from being in the same room as other spinners. And sometimes it can be hard to arrange that. Hi. I'm still in plating. <laughs> Do you have all your holes? All my holes are, are patched up. I was just apparently trying to suck the the uh, couch uh, through the airport. No, that's not good. Well, now they can't even see my head. Well, maybe I can adjust. Give them more of a view of the, of the ceiling and therefore your head. Uh, all right. So now for the first time ever. Live on YouTube. I, I gotta figure out where I have. Okay, yeah. For the first Can time, T-Rex on YouTube, flying T-Rex. I gotta inflate myself enough so that I could actually see a little bit. See of a hole. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Jill, you gotta go down so it actually looks. You can see what I'm spinning. What? There we go. Look. Now you can say you've seen it here. Um, oh my God, I can totally not see my angle and twist at all. There we go. <laughs> uh, flying T-Rex. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you, guys. Have a great end of the year. Bye. Bye. All right.